15. Jesus Christ most definitely was at creation. The pre-incarnate Son of God was there with the Father discussing, let us make man in our image. In John 3.17, we are told that it is the Father who sends His Son into the world. Now this is very crucial for you to understand. You cannot send your Son into the Navy if your Son does not exist prior to the day He is recruited. Therefore, you cannot send... God could not send His Son into the world if His Son was not in existence prior to coming into the world. And this is the same language we find in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. Mr. Bernard says that, that there are not two persons in the, God, but in the Godhead, but yet we find a conversation between the two persons. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. And when He again brings the firstborn into the world. Notice, it is the firstborn that is being brought into the world. He says, and let all the angels of God worship Him. Verse 7, please. And the angels, and of the angels, saith, who maketh His angels spirits and His ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, He saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Notice, it is the Father who says, Thy throne, O God. It is God speaking to God, saying that the scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom, and it will not depart, for it is your throne forever and ever. Now, Mr. Bernard believes that that is not true, that his throne is not forever and ever, for in his book he states that there will be an end to the role of Jesus Christ. There will be an end to his reign. And I have that quote available if you'd like to see it later. But all throughout Scripture... The Bible says that Jesus Christ is in existence, that He was there at creation, that He was there speaking from the bush with Moses on, in Exodus chapter 3. Jesus says, or, or rather Moses says, what is your name? He says, I am that I am. He doesn't say Jehovah, but He says, I am. Now I agree that His name is Jehovah, but for some reason... God answered him and said, My name is I Am. But yet in John chapter 8, verse 24, Jesus says that unless you believe that I am, you will die in your sins. Jesus is saying, if he's not the same God that spoke, Amen. If he's not the same God, if he's not the same God that spoke to Moses from Exodus chapter 3, then you will die in your sins. However, you don't believe, or he doesn't believe at least, I don't know what you believe, he doesn't believe that that was Jesus speaking from the bush. Because he does not believe that Jesus is the Father. He believes that the Father is Jesus. But he doesn't believe that Jesus is the Father. That's what I said. What? I read it in his book last night. I can give you the quotation if you like. Micah chapter 5 verse 2. The Bible speaks of God, the Son, in terms of Him being eternal. Not only will His scepter and His throne last forever, but He Himself lasts forever because He is the Alpha and the Omega. Look at Micah 5, 2. But as for you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you one will go forth for me. Oh, who is this speaking of? The Father is saying, from you, one will go forth from me? Why doesn't the Father just say, I will go forth in Him? He doesn't say that. He speaks from the standpoint of two persons. He says, from you, one will go forth from me, to be the ruler in Israel. And His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. Therefore, He is, as it says in the King James, in verse 2, it says that He is from everlasting, which we understand to be, there it is, have been from old, from everlasting, which we, ex we ex explain to be eternal. And I'm sure that we would at least agree about that. But who is this talking of? It's talking about the Son of God going forth from me. That is the Father. And His goings forth are eternal. To reject the fact that Jesus Christ is eternal. Not only is to worship a different God, 
but is to undermine the direct revelation in the teaching of the Word of God. We cannot approach the Word of God in a natural sense and try to understand who God is. We cannot look around and say, well, because I don't see anything in my creation that, that models God completely as three persons. And because a man is only one person, therefore God must be one person, is a most dangerous and grave mistake that will in fact bear eternal consequences. I'm supposed to give a rebuttal of his speech and then he will do the same for mine. I would first like to say I do not believe that we worship two different gods. I do believe that he and I worship the same God but just have a different understanding. If I met the president and I recognized him as the president, if he met the president and, and he was dressed casually and he didn't know who he was, we would still have met the same person even though we have slightly different understandings of who that person is. Now, he said that he believes that God is three persons. He never tried to show anywhere where, where there is three distinct persons in Scripture. He never defined what he meant by persons, so I'm at a loss. If he means manifestations, I would agree with him. But if he means persons, I want to know. Does he mean different minds, different bodies, different centers of consciousness? We don't know what he's talking about. He has not given any Scripture for that. Also, he said separate persons. The classic doctrine of the Trinity, as it's defined by the theologians, says we do not believe in separate persons, we believe in distinct persons. So I want to know if he sees his view as different from the majority of Trinitarians, or if what he said was an error and he wants to conform his thinking to that. Now, Genesis 1.26, God said, he interpreted that the Father speaking to the Son. It doesn't say the Father, it doesn't say the Son. It says God said. If God was speaking to someone else, there was somebody beside God who was there. If God is a trinity, then the trinity was speaking to some fourth person. And I want him to define who that person was. Verse 27 says, so God created man in his own image. There's the explanation. Adam was the one creature who reflect the image of God. I know we're not like God in every way, but in this context, it is saying, this is my image creature, and this is a reflection. And so we would expect to see the reflection. Uh, Isaiah 44, 24 said, God did all, created all things alone and by himself. How can we explain that? Ephesians 1, 11 says, God worketh all things together after the counsel of his own will. He says it would be a schizophrenic God that would say, let us, if he's only one personal being. And that if we saw someone do that, we would think they're schizophrenic. I dare say he and I both would be schizophrenic in that category. If you've ever sat down and said, let's see, what am I going to do today? Let us see. The royal we, and Ezra and Nehemiah, you can read through it and you find kings that says, we do this, we do that. And it was one king sending out a letter. If humans can say that, how much more cannot God say that? Hebrews 1, 2, creation by the Son. Uh, there was only one creator, Jehovah, who did it alone and by himself. The Son was not there as a separate person. However, the Bible speaks in, in uh, 1 Peter 1 and also in the book of Revelation, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. When God created the worlds, he had the Son in view. He predicated all of creation on the redemptive plan of the Son because he knew without that redemptive plan, his creation would be destroyed. And so it's literally the worlds, it's literally Ionas. In Greek, ages, he created all the ages. Abraham, when he came along, was with the son. He was delivered with the son in view. Moses saved with the son in view. All throughout the ages, it's depending upon the son of God. Another point, John 1.3 does not say the Son created the worlds. It says the Word created the worlds. And that is God in self-revelation, whom we know to be Jesus Christ. Colossians 1 does establish Jesus as the Creator. He was a Creator as a separate person. He was a Creator as God Himself. If I say President Clinton was born in Arkansas, I don't mean he was President when he was born. I mean the man that I have met as President was born in Arkansas. Jesus was the Creator. He wasn't the Son. He wasn't the Lamb when He was Creator. But He he was the eternal spirit of the one true God. Hebrews 1 talks about conversations. Uh, he, he says conversations being persons of the Godhead. It's a prophecy from Psalms. It's the word of God speaking in Psalms that prophesies. 
uh, of the Son. So it's not one God sitting beside another God talking to him. It's God said in Scripture, I'm going to have a Messiah. I'm going to have a King. He's going to come forth. And He's not only going to be a man, He is going to be the one true God. And remember, God has no equal. So if a prophecy says that Messiah is going to be the one true God, it doesn't mean another 